This is an unboxing, finally, of Midara Unintentional Melon Act, Act 1. Now, this is the latest printing that just arrived. I have the all-in uh, pledge, so we'll look at each of the things. Um, actually, before I even open this box, which is enormously heavy, I think this was like 32 pounds total shipment weight, most of it in this one box. Let's just take a quick look at the dice. So the dice actually came outside of the box. I think they actually look better in person than they did, you know, in the pictures. They're pretty nice dice, I would say. Um, you can probably see them. They're good looking dice, I would say. Much better in person than in the pictures. And let's also look at the neoprene mats. So this did come, um, since it's all in, it comes with player mats, which is kind of a special thing. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of mats. I use mats on my tables, but these are character mats that go with the different uh, characters in the game that you can be playing. And since it's a story-driven or narrative-driven campaign, you're going to be playing all four different characters each game. I think even in the solo mode or the two-player mode, you have to play all the characters. So this is... what. I guess they don't have the name on them, so I don't remember their names offhand. But it looks good. I would say not bad looking. Um, put them in here and then we'll open them up later. So we have this one. The, the one negative is they are not that thick um, and they are not stitched. So. They are a little bit cheaper than I would have liked. Like even my uh, mats here, they're the same thickness, but they have stitch edges. And one thing is, if you don't get the thicker mats, they tend to not lay down all that well on your table. So maybe a little disappointed at the quality of them, but you know, the uh, uh, you can only they can only have so many high quality components. Looks good. I mean, one nice thing is it does kind of lay out your whole uh, thing, and, and having the player mats is a nice, uh, nice touch in this game. Not gonna lie. And the last one, which I think is one of the coolest characters, I, I forget his name, but he is definitely uh, one of the cool, coolest looking characters. So I'm not gonna unfold the whole thing, but basically the same mat with uh, this uh, really happening dude with a giant hammer on it. So I'll put this off to the side. We'll also look at the Kickstarter one promo pack at the end of this. So this thing is, again, a massive box. Now the box is huge, but even more than the box is the weight. And I think there's just so much cardboard in this that it weighs a ton. Now one thing is they actually did a pretty good job with the ship, with the packaging around it. I wouldn't say like Eagle Griffin games quality where I'm not, I mean, but I was a little bit concerned about damage, but everything came in basically pristine condition. Uh, I'm not even going to try to get this stuff out of the bottom. Ooh. All right, let's pull this off. I'm going to sit it down over here. Oops. <laughs> Hit the camera. Okay. So when you open this up, you're going to see all the miniatures. I'm not going to... Uh, show everyone, but I'm going to show some of the maybe the ones that I, I really like, or I really like, or that kind of stand out to me. Now, like I said, I don't know all the characters here, but um, let's talk about first the happening dude. I can't remember his name. I would say the miniatures aren't the best quality, but they're definitely good quality. They're maybe, um, they're not super detailed, but they, like this, they are well put together and things like this with the wings are really cool. Like it's like a angel or something like a, um, we got this uh, pirate guy, which you may have seen. He's pretty cool looking. The giant swords. And this, oh, for people that aren't familiar, this is a, like a, JRPG style board game. Now one thing is because they aren't super detailed I think they would actually be fairly easy for amateurs to paint, maybe even myself, to paint some of these. Um, this guy's got a pretty cool like JRPG style sword like Final Fantasy style sword. 
and let's uh now they are a little bit uh able to be broken here i mean they're fairly delicate um but i would say they're maybe a little bit better or maybe on the same order of the zombicide miniatures in terms of quality and we have this lady who has a huge sword i don't know if you can see it or maybe like i don't know it almost looks like a stick And finally, this like undead guy, which I feel like is going to break just looking at him. So those are the first set of minis that open. Now these are the jumbo boss minis that come in this side. So in here, yeah, I'm pretty sure these are the characters. You always got to make your bosses a little bit bigger. And these are like maybe the same detail level, just bigger. So at least this one is. These ones look a little bit better. So this is like a, I don't know, some plant demon or something. That's kind of what it looks like. And a tree demon. Wow, these are a little delicate. But these are not like rising sun or I would say even uh, I don't think they're Blood Rage caliber uh, sculpts. Definitely less detailed, but I do think like an amateur painter could make these look really good. And maybe they wouldn't even take that long to paint. So I may try my hand at it if I ever get uh, enough free time to go do it. But one other thing I did like about this game is it does have a giant story, but it also has a narr uh, narration app. Now, one thing I'm never a big fan of are these bait colored bases, but there's probably some reason behind that. And we have little standees. Um, unfortunately, it uses the same, I'm not going to open these, but the artwork I think looks really good on them, but they use the same like square tiles as many other dungeon crawlers. I think, I don't know, square tiles work. It's just a little boring. The Gloomhaven system is maybe a little bit better, and I would have even preferred like the Gloomhaven storybook, which they have a huge book in here um, to play through, but I would have... Uh, you know, the Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, and Future Ones, where they have a, a book that you're actually going through. So next, we have the rule book, which is pretty nice. It's, it's many pages, 63 pages. It's a fairly complex dungeon crawl, and there's a lot going on here. And I don't have any place to set this because there's so much stuff in there, so I'll put it over there. This is a diagram book. So this is for various diagrams. I'm not going to give any spoilers. This is the crawl books. They have this new crawl mode in here where if you just want to do dungeon crawls and not worry about story, you can do that. This is a Blighted Terror, uh, I guess, pack. Oh, look at this. So why is there two sets of dice? That's interesting. Maybe they goofed in the first set. It's possible, but oh, I think with the all-in pack, there's a, it comes with a second set of dice. Um, okay, so we got uh, these monster cards. It looks like this is stop. Do not reveal this deck until explicitly told to do so. I'm not going to open up all these cards. There's a lot of cards in this game. I feel like I need to. Uh, I don't know. I, I was thinking I didn't need to sleeve these, but maybe i will so there's I'll, i will show the, the packs of cards just to see the outside so medium hidden card in deck so you can't open that but these are uncommon weapons so you know a lot of this game i think is going to be you know story driven but it's also going to be building your characters and collecting loot so one thing is with midara you're not uh you know specifically have to create a character it's not like your typical you know rpg where or narrative RPG where a character has to be a mage or a character has to be or is better be a mage. I think you can basically build them however you want. So this is the book, which is most of the weight here. There's actually it feels like there's something underneath. Um, or maybe that's just a stabilization for the, I think it's just extra. Oh, there is something underneath. So that might be a surprise for people. So I'm not going to spoil it in this video, but just to know there is something underneath if you take everything out. And 
Let's see. Um, so we have some weapon, a uh, rare relic deck with some weapons. We have, it looks like, mundane consum consumables deck. We have a mundane unique weapon deck. We have a mundane, mundane weapon deck. We have a rare weapon deck and a rare relic deck. We have a, a viewfinder for viewing hidden information. Um, we have a rare armor deck. We have um, decks for uh, item upgrades. We have decks for imbued weapon upgrades. We have decks for uh, these must be like abilities and stuff. Now one thing I will say is I like the artwork on I, I think I like the artwork in general on these items. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's Amazing on like these things, but on the weapons and the armor. I think that the artwork looks really really good in this game and We have these must be various oh, and that's actually water loa It's something from the uh, from the artwork book. I think and then small hidden card deck, so you're not supposed to reveal these. This is almost like a legacy game, uh, or it has some legacy aspects in it, where there's a bunch, where there's some hidden information, some hidden stuff. Um, so now, before we do anything, before I, uh, I'm not going to reveal this on camera, but I will look underneath and just for my own interest in what's in the bottom. And let's open up the Kickstarter one promo pack. So. In addition to all the stuff that's in here, uh, since it's a kick, since it was a Kickstarter back, you get the Kickstarter one promo pack, and this is going to have even more stuff. So let's see what's inside. It's got additional items, just a small pack of additional items. It's got uh, uh, Nyx, who I. Th I think it's another hero? I don't know. I, I guess I don't know all the details. It has some more cards on here. Linked Adventurer. So you can have, I guess this is Nightingale Arson. It has some new enemies, which I'm not going to go through these ones like I didn't go through the other ones, but if you're interested, I'm sure you can look online. And what most people are probably interested in, it's got even more miniatures. Now these ones, I'm going to stand up for this. It's got... Uh, oh, and let me add, um, I do have the resin kits, so I will go through those in a separate video, um, show off the boxes and show, you know, what came in the resin kits for people that are, that are interested. So I'll just hold the whole thing up, see if everyone can see it, and I'll take a few out. So, uh, Nick's is like this devil, I don't know, thing with a side that's almost like a, uh, I don't know, almost like a Grim Reaper style, like a different take on the Grim Reaper. We have, looks like these are different uh, minions you might fight. Who is this? This person has a giant spear, which looks very breakable. Hopefully my kids never get a hold of this. I like this. I like this sword thing. And we have a really cool looking demon of sorts, it looks like. The base looks a little messed up, but that's okay. And another demon, which I think is the, it's the exact same miniature. So just a couple copies of these things. Probably minis to replace different things you see in the game. So... Try not to bump the camera this time, and hopefully you can see this. But this is the unboxing of Midar, or the finish of the unboxing of the Midar Act One uh, Kickstarter. If you like this video, please like and please subscribe. And also, I will be doing a look at the resin kits from the same shipment in another video. So take a look at that. Thank you.